Congressman-elect Bernie Sanders, uh, independent Vermont at large seat. In your former role as uh, the mayor of Burlington, Vermont, you were in Washington many times and uh, working on a variety of issues. What is it like coming here as a congressman-elect? Well, it seems that it takes about two days to find out where the bathrooms are. It's, uh, the bureaucracy is enormous, and, and what is being thrown at us, I think, necessarily is all kinds of information uh, as to how you put together your office, how you make sure that you obey all the rules and you don't go to jail for taking gifts that you shouldn't take and all these other things. So it's the first impression is an enormous amount of information that's being thrown at you. Uh, you're meeting all kinds of people. Uh, you're concentrating on trying to get onto the committees of your choice. Uh, in my case, there was a, a, a problem of whether or not I would be within the Democratic caucus or not, and that took a lot of work and effort. Uh, you're being bombarded, in our case, by at least several hundred people who would like jobs. Uh, by many people of the media who would like interviews. Uh, so it's, uh, it's been, to say the very least, an exhilarating and interesting week. Have you been bombarded more than most or less than most because of your independent status? In terms of job applications, I don't know. I, I suspect that in, in all of the uh, cubbies that I saw there, the large numbers of applications, uh, I think in terms of the media, we've probably gotten more interest. If you could explain uh, to the audience a little bit of the behind the scenes maneuvering on the question of whether or not you would join the Democratic Caucus. Okay, I was elected uh, as an independent. I served four terms as mayor of the city of Burlington, Vermont, which is the largest city in our state, as an independent. And in fact, Burlington, Vermont today is the only three party city in the United States of America where uh, independents and progressives have uh, done very well against Democrats and Republicans. Uh, I ran uh, as an independent in this election received 56 percent of the vote. Uh, the Republican candidate received about 40 percent, and the Democratic candidate received 3 percent. Having won as an independent and intending very firmly to remain as an independent, the first concern that I had is how do I make sure that I get good committee assignments which represent the needs of my state? Uh, and what I had pledged the people of Vermont during the campaign is that I would make request entry into the Democratic caucus because I wanted to make sure that we, you know, I was not pushed aside and put on irrelevant committees. Uh, I am not a Democrat, but clearly of the two caucuses, uh, my political philosophy is much closer to the progressive wing of the Democratic Party than clearly to the Republican Party. And that was what I campaigned on. Uh, in fact, during this last week here, the Democratic caucus and, and party has been very generous uh, to me in allowing me to attend a number of the panel discussions and, and some of the functions and so forth. Uh, but uh, for a variety of reasons, they have made the decision that I will not be accepted into the Democratic caucus. On the other hand, what has evolved, which is absolutely satisfactory to me, is their willingness to say, okay, Bernie, we will treat you the same as we will any Democrat in terms of committee assignments. So I will put forth my requests. They will assign me essentially to the committee of my choice, and I can't complain. So I'm happy about that. I will accrue seniority. Uh, so I think the agreement is a satisfactory one. Are there any other uh, aspects of uh, being the lone independent in Congress that, uh, that you see as a downside? Uh, I think the, in many ways the advantages outweigh the disadvantages. Um, I think not being a member of the Democratic Caucus uh, and, and getting the committee assignments, the advantage is, is I don't have a party hierarchy on top of me, and it gives me a little bit more freedom to speak out on all of the issues. Um, I think that, uh, by and large, in this country today, there is a growing anger and frustration, not only at Congress, who people feel is not representing them, but at the two-party system. Uh, I think you, there was a poll recently which indicated that something like 53% of Americans don't know the difference between the Democratic Party and the Republican Party. So being on the outside, I have a little bit more freedom to be critical of, of the leadership of both parties. We want to go to the phones just as soon as we can for Congressman-elect Bernie Sanders, uh, independent of Vermont, 202-628-2525 for viewers watching in the eastern or central time zones, 202-783-2727 for those of you watching in the mountain or Pacific time zones. Not your first try uh, no. to come to Washington. You're here now, 1991. What, what do you hope to accomplish? Well, I'll tell you, Susan, uh, there are, we could spend six hours talking about all of the problems that exist in this country. I mean, the, the crisis in health care, the fact that we have 15 percent of our population without any health insurance, the collapse of our educational system, uh, the fact that we are spending $300 billion on the military despite the fact that the Cold War is over, the growing gap between the rich and the poor. I can go on and on. The fact that 
much of America is owned and controlled by relatively few people. But I'll tell you honestly what I think the most important problem is and where I want to play at least some role. And that is that the average American, to a significant degree, is giving up on government. Uh, to me, the major crisis that we face is that in this last election, as you know, about 60% of the people were given the choice of the Democratic and Republican parties in Congress didn't vote at all. You know, all of us are dismayed that in South Africa, for example, black people can't vote. How many of us know that in this country, poor people don't vote anymore? The last election, presidential election in 1988, you had 50% of the people not choosing to vote for Dukakis or Bush. Uh, you have a situation in this era of anti-incumbency, throw the bums out. 96% of these guys got reelected. So the basic issue is how to you reinvigorate democracy how to make the average working person, the elderly person, the poor person say, you know what, this is my government. Those people in Washington listen to me, they are representing my interest, and they're not just standing with the rich and the powerful against me. Now, how do you do that? That has to do with the media, who owns and controls the media. It has to do with the two-party system. It has to do with campaign financing and the fact that many of the, can many of the candidates are heavily indebted to wealthy people and corporations who buy them, who buy uh, politicians, who buy elections. So how we can begin the serious discussion, the national debate that we need, which says, where do we want to go as a country? Who has the power in this country? How do we democratize all of our institutions? How do we give working people power over their own lives? You know, we freed the slaves a long, long time ago, but in many respects, in many respects and I don't mean to be rhetorical about it, the average working person today has very little rights. Corporations announce a worker comes to work on a, on a Friday, and the corporation says, oh, by the way, we're moving to Mexico. You worked for our company 30 years, here's a few bucks. You have no power to say, oh, you don't have any power over your job. So I think the major challenge we, we, we face is not only a redistribution of wealth, which is important, but a redistribution of power, making the average American feel, this is my country, this is a democracy. I can shape the future. The people don't feel that now. They sit down, they watch the tube for 40 or 50 hours a week, they hold their nose, they vote for the lesser of two evils. Now that, that to me is the, is the major problem. And once we can begin to deal with that, with that problem, I think other things will follow. Is Washington set up to handle big picture questions? No, uh, my impression is that it's not. I think we are, we, God, you see the, the problem, not even in I'm talking about a we. Uh, I think uh, the system is uh, co compartmentalized into hundreds of different little, little areas, each of which are important. I don't mean to suggest that they're not. Every, committee is dealing with billions of dollars here and billions of dollars there. But I don't know that the Congress itself is saying, for example, the first question that I think the President of the United States should ask the American people is, why don't you have any faith in us? Why don't you vote? Why don't you participate? Why do you have such contempt for government? And I think we should, as a Congress, be dealing with that issue. How do you make the people once again have faith in, in their country uh, and in their government? Does the Congress do that? I don't think so. Gloucester County, Virginia, you're on the air. Bernie Sanders. Hello. Yes, Hello. go ahead. Yes, I hesitate to address you, but Mr. Sanders, we did meet many years ago in Vermont. And first of all and foremost and most importantly, I want to congratulate you a thousand and ten percent for winning winning under an independent label. This is one who has voted forever for all the losers registering as an independent, et cetera, et cetera. Also understanding so well what you stand for and wishing to give you some encouragement to uh, whatever it takes, fight that socialist label. Uh, it, I was a native-born Scandinavian. I know what it means be a social democrat. I know the humanity, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, therein. And I know what you are trying to do, and I just wish you so very, very well, and I hope we can keep in touch. Thank you. And Why don't we let you go at that point? Thanks for the call. A lot of callers on the line. Okay. Well, I think the caller, when you asked what I want to accomplish, I think clearly one of the, one of the things also that I want to do is to make the concepts of democratic socialism, that is not authoritarian communism, it has nothing to do with it, part of the serious discussion that perhaps takes place in this country. Because I think if you look at the two-party system and the ideology, they're about separated by about a half an inch. And we need a much broader discussion of the causes of our problems 
and the, and, and the solutions to our problems. So if we can inject some discussion as to what democratic socialism might mean, what goes on in Scandinavia, what has gone on in social democ democratic countries in Western Europe. If I can play some role in doing that, I think I'll have accomplished something. Orlando. Hi. Hello. I don't think that uh, you have to apologize for being a socialist, but I certainly would like to know how you can apologize for being the son-in-law of Representative Lantos of California. Well, I think you have the wrong guy. If I'm not mistaken, uh, Congressman Lantos happens to be no relationship to me at all. If I am not mistaken, I believe the newly, represent, uh, the newly elected congressman from New Hampshire is the son-in-law of Congressman Lantos. So I, you got the wrong guy, for better or worse. Okay, thanks. You have a, another question? All right, we lost that caller. Um, your specific committee assignments that you want to have are what? The three major committees uh, that I have requested to be on are Commerce and Energy. Uh, my understanding is it's very difficult for any freshman to get on that one. I want that one, if possible, because of my concern and, and, and desire to see a national health care system established in this country. They deal with health care. The other uh, committee is Education and Labor, for the obvious reasons. We have back home the support of, of vast majorities of the working people and of the unions and I want to fight to improve the life of working people. Education clearly is an enormous issue for our teachers back home, for our parents and for the kids. Uh, and the third committee that I'm looking at is uh, banking, uh, finance, and urban affairs. As a former mayor, that's of interest to me. And given the uh, tremendous, well, the virtual collapse of the savings and